okay guys in this video i will discuss about development length okay uh, i think if you have designed any concrete beam or particularly beam column joint definitely you must have encountered this particular formula where it is used for calculating the development length required for any type of reinforcement okay so this video is going to be all about what is development length why this development length is required and how we have reached this formula okay so if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited okay so let's start at the very first i would just like to mention that i will discuss everything based on is456 codal provision okay so what is development length well so for understanding about this development length we will consider this particular beam column junction okay so this is a concrete beam column junction and if you have ever witnessed any type of beam column concrete beam column junction construction there you must have seen that the reinforcement for the beam this is the reinforcement for beam they are not provided from this particular face of the column they are provided at least from this face of this column okay so you just have to provide this much amount of extra reinforcement okay or you can say this much amount of extra reinforcement so this much amount of extra reinforcement here you can see that this is the extra reinforcement after this column phase okay so this extra reinforcement is known as the development length okay so now it is clear to you that this particular extra reinforcement is known as development length okay so now the question is why this development length is needed at all why we need to provide this extra amount of reinforcement if this is the column if this is the beam then why this much reinforcement is not sufficient why we need to provide this much amount of extra reinforcement okay what is the reason okay let's understand about it just consider any particular beam okay so first consider a simply supported beam so this is the simply supported beam and let's say you have some loading over this and what is the bending moment diagram for this beam okay so this is the bending moment diagram this is for simply supported beam okay now let's say you have a continuous beam like this okay so let's say this is the continuous beam this is one support this is one support and this is another support again you have some loading like this so what is the bending moment diagram again well so the bending moment diagram is going to be something like this okay so this is the support this is the support and this is the support here you can see that in this two support the bending moment is zero but at this particular support we have some bending moment okay so this support is nothing but a column and the beam is connected over this column so if we consider this particular beam column junction it will look something like this so this is the column okay and let me use some different color for the beam so this is the beam okay so we have considered this particular junction right and here you can see that we have some bending moment in this support that means at this support okay so in this support as well in this support we have some amount of bending moment okay so just consider any particular phase let's say we are considering only this phase forget about this one okay so this is our column this is the column this is the beam and this is the beam this is the column clear okay now we have some bending moment here so this is the bending moment right so due to this bending moment what will happen here there will be some tensile force and here there will be some compressive force clear great 
okay now you have provided some reinforcement here okay so this is the reinforcement and this is another reinforcement okay so in this top reinforcement this is the top reinforcement okay under tension and this is the bottom reinforcement under compressive force okay so this is the tensile force this is the compressive force just consider this one what is happening here due to this bending moment okay so due to this bending moment there is a tensile force acting over this reinforcement okay so this reinforcement is being acted by a tensile force or you can say that this particular tensile force is trying to pull away this top reinforcement okay so if we simply use some different color here so this top reinforcement is being pulled by this tensile force so what will happen if the bonding between this concrete and this top reinforcement is not sufficient then what will happen the stop reinforcement will come out so for that what you have to do well in this particular zone you have to provide some additional length okay in the form of a development length so that this particular tensile reinforcement get enough length to counter this tensile force okay clear so due to this bending moment you have some tensile force at the stop and this tensile force is trying to pull away this top reinforcement okay so to resist that what you have to do you have to provide some extra length to counter the tensile force so what is the value of that extra length okay again just calculate it so first let me erase everything okay now let's say uh, this is the concrete okay so this is the concrete part right great now let's say we have some reinforcement here uh, we have some reinforcement here so let's say this is the reinforcement okay so we need to calculate this extra length okay so here the tensile force is acting here right so this is the t tensile force and the value is simply the strength of the steel or sigma times the area cross sectional area okay so this is the tensile strength here and area is nothing but pi by 4 time t square okay this is the tensile force maximum tensile force acting over this reinforcement okay now consider the bond stress between this river and this concrete okay so this is the bond stress okay so this is the bond stress acting along the surface of the reinforcement let's say this is simply tau and what is the surface area if this is the development length that is ld what is the surface area the surface area is simply ld times the perimeter that is pi times d okay so what is the total resisting force here for counteracting this tensile force simply the surface area times this stress and that is coming as tau times uh, ld times pi d okay so this need to be equal with this one okay so if you equate this to one then you are getting ld as ld is coming as cancel pi pi d d and you are getting ld as sigma d times 4 into and this is the bond stress okay so this is the development length you need to provide okay sigma times d divided by 4 times tau okay so sigma times d this is the diameter and divided by 4 times tau this is the formula now you have understood how this formula scheme and as for is 456 clause 
26.2.1 the anchorage value okay the anchorage value is this one this vertical one this is the anchorage value this anchorage value also included within this development net and how to provide the minimum anchorage value for that you have to consider this clause 26.2.2.1 and here based on the angle of the bend you have to provide this particular anchorage value okay so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it